Hello, UMEA applicants. Um, my name is Ryan Nielsen. I am the trumpet professor at Utah Valley University, and I'm putting this video together to help you prepare for your audition. To start things off, I'll perform the excerpt for you, and then afterwards give you some tips on how to prepare. The first thing that you want to consider, and I think it's the most important thing to consider any time that you're starting to prepare anything, uh, is the feel or the dance of the music. So I want you to notice some really important things about that dance in the opening section of this excerpt. The first thing that we want to notice is that this is more of a martial feel. Jump bump, bee ba da da, jump bump. Bum, ba -da -da. There's this constant repeating idea in the dance itself where there's an accent on the and of two. One and two. And da da da. Dee da 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 One and and da da da. So that accent on the and of two is what gives this dance its characteristic feel. So when we take that up to time, beep bump ba da da da. Beep bump ba da da da. That excitement and energy on the end of two is a huge part of making this feel the way that we want it to when we perform it. So once you've got yourself to a place where you can tap the pulse and feel that dance and that exciting accent on the end of two, um, then you're ready to start looking at phrasing. Where exactly are we going to phrase to? You want to have a pretty clear map of this as you move forward with your preparation for your audition. So, so one of the practice techniques uh, that I love to use to practice my phrasing is to speak the shape of the phrase. And by and so what I mean by that is I'm going to practice taking my phrase to the end of two in the first measure and then to the end of two in the third measure and I'm going to speak the shape that I want. Beam bump ba da 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 be da 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 and just by the rise and fall of my voice I'm sort of training my brain to understand exactly what I want from it in terms of the shape of the line. Where am I phrasing to? The next thing that I want you to ask yourself is if I look at the whole first section, the entire thing. Where is the clear climax? And you can see very clearly that it's the high B in the second to last measure in this section of the excerpt. And here's what's so special about it. For the first several measures, we keep coming back to this accent on the and of two. And then all of a sudden, there's this really important accent right on beat three. It's the first time we have it happen in the piece. And for that reason, we want to make it sparkle. Let's move now to considering the second section of the excerpt, which opens with this beautiful cantabile melody. Just like before, our first question for ourselves is, what's the feel? How does this dance? And to my ears, where the first section was all about feeling this martial dance on the quarter note, zhum, zhum, zhum. now on the second section, I'm going to open up to feeling a very free two. Be da da be da da. So I'm feeling the dance on the half note rather than on the quarter note like I did for the opening. 
second section. So that brings us to our next question, which is where am I going to shape the phrase? Where are the clear climaxes or the most interesting moments of this section? If we look at the cantabile by itself, it's clearly phrasing to the downbeat. It's emphasizing the downbeat over and over again at the beginning. So that's pretty straightforward. But where it gets really fun is in this measure right here. You can see that there's an exciting opportunity to accent beat two. After everything in the excerpt seems to be just falling gently on beat one of the measure, all of a sudden there's this really fun beat two. And the composer's even written in a set of grace notes to help us emphasize this even more. This brings us to the section marked Giocoso, where the dance changes once again, and now we're back to feeling the quarter note in a very light and playful way where the composer sort of tips their hat to the rhythms of ragtime. To bring out the ragtime-like rhythms, we want to emphasize the syncopation, the rhythms that happen in unexpected places. So of particular interest in this section, Mark Giocoso, is the rhythm that emphasizes the fourth sixteenth note of the beat. Finally, we return to the same feel that we had in the opening section. So we're feeling the dance again on the quarter note. Shum, shum. That exciting accent on the end of two returns. One and and da da da. One and and da da da. We want to make that and of two sparkle again. And then make sure that we are playing the accents on the last section with a lot of percussive effect. There are a few spots in this excerpt that can be a little bit tricky rhythmically, and it's really important to practice them in a way where you're feeling three things at the same time, the meter, the pulse, and the subdivision. One of the reasons this excerpt was chosen was to find out if you can move from feeling a 16th note subdivision to a triplet subdivision back and forth seamlessly and accurately. To practice this, I recommend turning on a metronome and just starting by feeling the 16th note grid. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, takadimi, 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 takadimi. And then from there, pivot to a triplet feel. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One example of moving from a 16th note subdivision to a triplet subdivision happens in measures three and four of the excerpt, where measure three has a 16th note subdivision, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, bum, bum, ch -ch bum, pa, pa, pa. So I'm feeling that 16th note the whole time that I'm playing. In the next measure, it abruptly switches to triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three. So I want to make sure that I'm comfortable moving from 16th notes to triplets so that when I go from measure three to measure four, I can be accurate and clear and very intentional about which subdivision I'm using. Just to review really quickly a summary of what we talked about, our first priority always is dance or feel. Until we have a sense of how the piece feels as a dance, we're not going to play in style. The second thing we talked about is having a very clear plan of the climaxes of every phrase, making sure that we know exactly where we're going to create emphasis as we create the illusion of forward motion with our phrasing. And the third thing we talked about is really accurate rhythm. And a really accurate rhythm, accurate rhythm means feeling the pulse, the meter, and the subdivision all of the time while we play. Good luck to you in your audition preparation. If I can be a help to you in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can reach me at rnielsen at uvu.edu, and I'll be sure to get back with you. In the meantime, have fun practicing, and make sure that you dance.